All right, so second episode, EKG miniseries, Nitty Gritty. Right, and this is Sinus Brady and Sinus Tack. Again, we're going to follow the same format that we said we were going to follow. Eight minutes of your time, hopefully to deliver you some information, to be able to find out what Sinus Brady looks like and what the characteristics are and what's normal. Right. No, hold on. Not what's normal, but... Treatment and when it's indicated. Right, if any. Okay. If any. So this first pay, this first uh, um, visual that you'll see just says sinus bradycardia. Mike found this, and I actually think it's a it's a good example. Um, again, getting back to the EKG part of it itself, um, you're seeing a P wave before every QRS and a T wave. Um, it's just slower and slower than what number, Mike? Sixty. Yeah. So less For a than sixty. Adult. Right. Less than 60 is considered sinus bradycardia. So we're not talking about blocks. We're not talking about any of that stuff. We're literally talking about a slow heart rate. Uh, and why is it slow? Uh, and why is it sinus bradycardia? Because it's coming out of the sinus node and it's the impulses are being sent slower. Right. Can we go to that other picture? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let's why? go to this other picture because I think that'll actually help it too. Okay. Pulling um, it up right here. Yep. Yeah. So, again, this is what you were just saying. Yeah. The, like they're actually leaving the sinus node mm -hmm. slower, at a slower rate. Right. It has nothing to do with the AV node because if we were talking about an issue there, we would be talking about... A heart block. Right, and we're not on that episode right. yet. Right. And But the, when it's coming out of the sinus node, it's going slower. Right. It's sending impulses slower, causing it to present as a bradycardic rhythm... Also, the heart rate beating less than 60. Right. Uh, the reason, and there could be a number of reasons right. why that's happening. So, what if you're just a fit person? I don't know what that feels like because nope, that's just not neither. in my, my uh, DNA. Mm -hmm. But you could be a fit person, and so their heart rates will be in the 50s, sometimes in the 40s, especially runners. Um, what else? And you put those patients on, some mo on the monitor, and you're like, oh, and then you look, and they got a six pack, and you're like, oh, okay, I get it. Yeah, and I you're like, you. right, <laughs> internally you. <laughs> you you kind of wishing harm on them, actually, <laughs> but yeah. Um, then you've got uh, beta blockers, a lot of people on beta blockers, mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. of people on beta blockers, or other medications that can cause your heart rate to slow down. Real some. quick, beta blockers, what's a big indicator? It's a beta blocker, laughing out loud, lulls. Right. Oh, you always say, oh, that's nice, laughing out loud. Is that good? That's great. I actually never learned it that way, but it's, it's a good idea. That's just the way that I take it away. Oh, that's good. Know. Um, and other medications like calcium channel blockers can cause you to be bradycardic. Um, and then you brought up one, overdoses, of a bazillion things. Well, that's the thing, too. Like, I think that I've, I've seen opioids where, you know, they're extremely tacky. Sure. But then I've seen them to where they overdosed and they're unresponsive right. and you're bagging them. And at that point in time, before you get Narcan on board, they're... They can present with some right. bradycardia sometimes. That right. makes sense. Yeah, I think so. I mean, the other thing that I, I also think when you when you go into this big um, category of overdose, yes, there's a thousand. Like when you look on a tox, toxicology website or when you talk to the Poison Control Center, they always tell you, oh, monitor for cardiac arrhythmia, which is a catch-all term, right? Mm -hmm. Cardiac arrhythmia is a catch-all term mm -hmm. of like, it ain't quite right. That's mm -hmm. what it's under. But you can have an overdose of a beta blocker and just have sinus bradycardia. You can have an overdose of, um, of digoxin and have sinus bradycardia. You can have an overdose of a whole bunch of drugs, calcium channel blockers, all kinds of things, and have a sinus bradycardia in addition to some other nuances that you might be able to see on the EKGs, which we're going to cover in the wild card section, I right. think. The last one. Right. The last one. The reason that I like the, but I do, what I do want to talk about with bradycardia, what I see a lot of, Medical providers, not just paramedics, EMTs, or or not just those, but doctors as well, is do you have to treat the patient? Do you have to treat the bradycardia? Are they symptomatic? Hold Are that they, thought. Yeah. They could be cold, like temperature-wise. They could have electrolyte abnormalities or something like that. But your question is very important. I right. cannot tell you the amount of times people are like, oh, I gave them atropine. Good for you. Did they need atropine? Well, that's the thing. I've always been one of those that like, and I've had disagreements in the back of the truck, respectfully. Right, You sure. know, respectfully. Sure. Listen to me. I'm listening to you. Right. Let's be professional here. It's all about the patient. But they ask, you know, are you going to give atropine? No, I'm not. 
because my patient has, has no complaint. Yeah, my patient's here for a fractured yeah, wrist. My patient has no complaint. Right. And I don't know what's causing this. And it, right now, I know it's causing the patient no harm. Sure. Now, do I have in my head that I what I would treat next if I, my should. patient started? Am I foreseeing? Yeah, absolutely. But I'm seeing. I'm one of those ones that I, if it ain't fixed, I, I, I if it ain't broke, I ain't fixing that. Right. So wh- I drew this pair of eyeballs. Mm-hmm. You have to look at your patient, right? Mm-hmm. Like if your patient's hypotensive or they're altered, or you think there's some weird reason why their bradycardia would contribute to what you're seeing, then treat it. But if not, then don't. And then finally, why else would we see sinus bradycardia for some reason that we don't know is just because it is what it is. It is. It's just how you is. It is what it is. I think we need a a, a, a visual for it is what it is. <laughs> okay. Changing it up, yep. going over to sinus tachycardia, which actually is, a, I think, would be a little simpler now that we know how it works. And we have that visual, mm-hmm. um, right, that combined kind of both in this one with the EKG findings for sinus tachycardia. This is what you'll see on the screen. Right. With also uh, the the ana- anatomic stuff, which I always think is helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, sinus tach is above... 100 for yeah. an adult. For yeah. For an adult. I feel like it's very, very... I feel like it's very important, I would say, for an adult. Right. Know, just because... Yeah, you get that. Yeah, weird. Kids have weird heart rates, yep, right? Yep. They just weird. Oh, they're I, all as, weird. As weird as that is to say, yeah. That I, I want that out there right. for an adult. Fine, for an adult. We'll say all of these are for adults until proven otherwise. Okay. Uh, the the thing we'll go ahead and start with. Uh, same thing as bradycardia. It is a. It is where a faster than normal impulse coming out of the SA node. Right, and it's, if it was coming out of the AV node, it would be. A runaway disaster. If it was... Pre-excitation. I don't know. A whole bunch of things. So if it was coming out of the AV node, what would it be? A runaway disaster. Yeah. But I will tell you that, of course, there's a P wave for our QRS, all that usual stuff. But my main thing about sinus tachycardia in general is it's, it's mainly a compensatory response. Think about it. Pain, your heart fits fast. Anxiety. You got a, anxiety. You got a fever. What if it's one of the initial reactions to losing blood? Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of things. Medication reactions. You've done some cocaine. You, you're, like, you're on Adderall. Mm-hmm. You're on Adipex. You're on all these other things. So I always ask myself, why? Right. Especially when I'm getting ready to discharge somebody or when someone comes in by EMS or any, for any why is their heart rate so fast? Thyroid disorder. Like, there's a bazillion reasons why that Dehydration. Happens. Diarrhea. Yeah. Right. Vomiting. Compensatory, right? Yeah. Usually. Right. So. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Why? Yeah, I mean, like, you, you, when you talk P-E. about Brady, it could be that this is the way the patient presents. But when right. you talk about tachycardia, I like the fact that something's happened. Right. And it's. Usually. Compensating. P.E. Um, there's other sorts of weird stuff. M.I. without any EKG changes. Mm-hmm. The thyroid thing, um, medications, which we kind of touched upon with Adderall, Adipex, and things like that. Um, Maybe they just gave themselves an EpiPen, and now they're tachycardic. Maybe you gave them Epi or Atropine trying to treat their sinus bradycardia, (laughs) and it was like a runaway disaster. Not me. Right. Um, Not me, unless they needed it. But you got to find out why. Okay. And, of course, it is what it is. It's also a category. (laughs) So treatment. Let's talk about that real quick. Mm. When to treat. You really have to treat the problem, right? usually. Okay. So treating the problem, uh, typically we found out it's going to be some dehydration. We can go right. toward normal saline. Sure. Obviously, if it's going to be blood loss, we probably need to be thinking something else. Right. Blood products. Yep. Closing uh, down the bleed. Pain, pain medication. But in pre-hospital, pre-hospital specifically, when to treat. Let's talk about some of the key findings um, when to treat. If it's 110, 120... You know, I mean, it depends on what your patient looks like right? Okay. and what you're dealing with. I mean, if you're dealing with chest pain, it's 10 out of 10 and it's going to their back. You better give them, A, something for pain, but B, see what their blood pressure is. Like, look at the rest of the picture. I guess the takeaway here is tachycardia, figure out what's causing Why? it, and then treat it a, That's lot, right. a lot quicker than you would your bradycardia. Or you could say, like, you could bring them to the ER and be like, hey, their heart rate's 120, but they're septic and their temp is 102. Right. That's reasonable. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. Okay.